set the stage for us. Yeah, I mean, it's it's no surprise to me, Brian, that this has been one of the competitors' favorite events and also one of the fans' favorite events. I believe this is the eighth rendition of the Waco Charity Open. There's a lot of history here, and I think that's, that's kind of what builds a, a memorable course. It becomes this nostalgic place. It becomes this prestigious finish there on 17 and 18. This is one of the shorter courses that we see all year long. We're coming in at 7,400 feet. I mean, that's really short on the Pro Tour standards. And taking a look at this flyover right here, Brian, and that Nate Sexton preview, that was beautifully written. We're on the banks of the Brazos River right here. Looking across the river, you can see this limestone bluff. And at the far end of the course, behind hole 17 and the, the newly designed 16, the confluence of the Bosque and the Brazos River. So the setting, it's, it's ideal for Central Texas. A state that has shown, it has the most courses, Brian. It has the most active PDGA members. It has the most tournaments every year. And Waco is right in the heart between Dallas, between Houston, between Austin, between all these disc golf hubs. So it's no surprise that this is one of the more successful events all season. And I'm proud that it's a DGPT Plus this year. Uh, so excited that this is a plus event. I totally agree with you, Nate. This is a course that even though it comes in at 7,400 feet, the players seem to love it year after year because it's just a little bit different than everything else we see. But as we watched in that introduction to this show, why does this course set up so well for dramatic finishes? I mean, it's it's the dichotomy of it. It's, it's playing in, in those woods and then not knowing what kind of wind you're gonna have out here. Most often the prevailing wind is, is out of the Northwest, which lends itself to a nasty crosswind on 17, where you have to take that, that, take that turn. You're throwing into the headwind, then into a gnarly cross, and then 18, it, it, it's just flying. The disc is flying into that limestone bluff across the way. It's a 400 foot water carry. You have to make that decision. Do you have the pace? to fight that headwind, cross the pond and go for the two, or are you gonna play safe, go for the three? So year after year, it comes down to those holes. I don't think there's ever been a Waco tournament yeah. that didn't come down to those last I, two. I, I think it's this tension that builds in multiple different ways out here. You get into the thick of the woods, kind of back of the front nine, and then the, the early part of the back nine. It's hard to not feel like you have to birdie a lot of those holes, but when you get yourself into trouble, that's when the pressure starts to mount. What's the rest of the field doing? Do I have what it takes to battle back to under par? Because I know when I get out into the open, there are some holes that could cost me serious strokes down the stretch. So I think this course is extremely entertaining. I can't wait to see the players attack it. Um, but Nate, there's a change that happened here. Hole 15, uh, originally the hole everyone know, knew as the uh, electrical box hole, the par four yeah. alongside of the road, for multiple reasons was taken out this year, mainly for a, you know safety reasons. A lot of mm -hmm. spectators line up to watch hole 18 on that road. But then also, there's a new hole being put in, hole number 16 now. Uh, talk about that. Let's fly that hole. Yeah, so we're back up against the river here, and this... <laughs> This is gonna play really interesting, Brian, because we're gonna most often be playing back into this head left to right here. So players, FPO players are looking at a 285 foot, essentially a pure hyzer that they have to swing out over the river. The OB line is maybe five feet up from the bank, but I see this hole being, it, it's either obviously the birdies there, but if you don't come back and bounce, there's no drop zone, Brian. So you're gonna be playing from maybe 50 feet up in front of that tee pad right there, throwing your third. There is a little cutout over there in the woods. If the FPO division doesn't feel like they have that hyzer, they can try and play something in the woods. Really challenging hole, fresh cut up here by the green. Can't wait to see how this one is playing. I mean, I think 16, 17, and 18 now are all going to be uh, just play their own role in this incredible finish. I think 16 is going to be great because that inside flex forehand uh, up that tunnel is still a formidable uh, option. And I think 
players like Kristen Tatar, when you know the, maybe the wind picks up a little bit too much, or uh, it just doesn't feel like the right wind to throw the hyzer. I think we're going to see some very successful forehand flexes. I think uh, you're not going to necessarily find yourself in the bullseye too often going up the gut like that, but I think you can definitely get yourself a putt for both divisions.